Korea is promising a merciless response to any U.S. provocation this weekend. Yeah, this comes amid word that the Trump administration has settled on a final strategy on dealing with the government of Kim Jong-un, one that involves a, quote, maximum pressure and engagement as well. KCAL 9 political reporter Dave Bryan joins us now with a look at the growing stakes in this standoff, Dave. Well, the stakes couldn't be higher, of course, but this new report tonight may be very important. Tonight, the Associated Press reporting President Trump's advisors have weighed a range of ideas for how to get North Korea to abandon its nuclear program. But in the end, the report is they decided to increase the pressure on the North Koreans with the help of China, which you may remember sounds very similar to the Obama administration policy. With goose stepping members of the North Korean military taking center stage, the Supreme Leader Kim Jong un led the celebration of one of his regime's most important holidays on Saturday morning, opening the event to international news cameras, which sent the live military images for the whole world to see. A country he hoped to demonstrate that is ready for any military adversary, including the U.S. On Friday night, the U.S. is showing off what the Air Force calls the Elephant Walk. 22 F-15s fully armed and ready to scramble from an air base in Japan, 900 miles from the North Korean capital. The video of this runway spectacle was shot last week by Air Force cameras, earmarked for a North Korean audience, flak jacket and all. We reconfigured every one of those F-15s with live ordnance inside of 24 hours and put them back on status and ready to fight. North Korea has already staged four ballistic missile launches this year, and despite warnings from the U.S. and China, says it's now prepared to conduct another nuclear test. The nuclear test will take place at a time, at a place that the supreme leadership deems necessary. So while the U.S. uses video of its naval fleet heading for the Korean coast and its fighter jets ready to rumble to intimidate the North Koreans, they are using strong words to give the U.S. second thoughts about carrying out a preemptive strike. If the U.S. comes up with a dangerous military option, then the first card is in our hands. We'll deal with it with our preemptive strike. This means war. So you're saying if you feel that North Korea is going to be attacked, you will use nuclear weapons? Of course. CNN reports North Korea is now believed to have produced between 13 and 30 nuclear warheads. And some experts believe that number could soon rise significantly if nothing is done to stop it. By the end of 2020, it, the numbers could go up to 25 to 50, and, and in, a, in the worst case, could go up to 60. And many of them could be hidden. That means they can disperse them. Most of them, I suspect, will be underground. And that ultimately means the U.S. does not have a first strike capability because we can't be assured of taking out all of their weapons. CNN reports experts with the monitoring group 38 North believe North Korea is already in position to test a nuclear warhead that's 16 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. And with Kim Jong-un's unpredictable and sometimes irrational decision-making, the danger quotient may be rising dramatically. I believe Kim Jong-un is even more dangerous than he appears. And the reason is that I don't think his regime is stable. It means he could do something that could surprise us. Because from his perspective, he may think he has little to lose. And with all this activity and tensions rising, Vice President Mike Pence will be heading to South Korea tomorrow, the first stop on an 11-day overseas trip. White House officials say the trip will drive home the, the feeling that the U.S. is committed to its security alliances with South Korea, Japan, and other possible North Korean targets. So a lot of moving parts right now right. on this. Now, Dave, the Associated Press is reporting that Trump has looked at all options when it comes to North Korea. Yeah. So if we had to bottom line it, what options do we have? Well, the, there, there are a few of them, and I mean just a few. The bottom line is there really aren't a lot of options, and none of them is considered to be very good. The AP report said among the ideas considered were different levels of military options, including a plan to overthrow Kim Jong-un uh, Kim Jong and get him out of office. But the problem with those approaches is they, if they don't succeed quickly, then you're probably talking about another Korean war. And in the longer term, per perhaps even a possible world war if China and other countries get 
get involved. So according to the AP report, in the end, the decision was made to try to turn up the heat on North Korea, increasing the pressure to tamp down Kim Jong-un's worst tendencies and reduce or eliminate his nuclear program, at least for now. But Lena, like I said, we've kind of heard that plan before. Yeah. All right. Dave, thank you.